Shall we go? Let's go. Um, so we're doing Unroot today. Chris, I've learned that Unroot is actually a slight misconception. It's Unroot, the Unroot effect it's called. Um, so here's the history as best I know it. The, and this, is, this comes from the book by Parker and Toms and Parker lived through it, so Parker. And number one on the list is Parker, Leonard Parker. So Parker around 65, um, use this technique, the Bogoliubov transformations, to do particle production. You know, not not in black holes yet, but so he he invented the technique. He certainly deserves a lot of credit for that. Um, this is this was his thesis. Uh, nice piece of work. Fulling, apparently. Uh, was the first, so this is 1972. Fulling um, shows that accelerated coordinates gives you a Bogoliubov transformation. Okay, but apparently didn't calculate it. Davies in 1975 um, showed that it was thermal. So you got, at that stage, we had thermal radiation out of it. And so why is it called the Unruh effect? Okay, so uh, Unruh, no, no, actually, it's, it's actually a lovely paper. I'm, I'm not being facetious. Actually, after, after seeing today's lecture, it's actually interesting to go back and see, or maybe, maybe wait for it on Tuesdays. Uh, See what he does there uh, to read it. It's actually more readable. I found after preparing my lectures than I've done before. Okay, but it's um, it's actually a lovely paper. What? But one of the things he does is he, he in there is he shows that a particle detector, particle detector, responds in this situation as if it, at a finite temperature. As if, in other words, um, so you, with his particle de detector is this little, it's a box with a particle in the ground state, you know, a particle in it, in ground state versus excited states. So a, a particle that's at a, in a thermal heat bath lives some of the time in excited states. And so, he showed that this thing is is for real. You know, particle detectors will see these things as if they're real particles. Okay, so but it ends up being called the Unruh effect. And I guess the other thing Unruh did at this stage, and this this was right after Hawking, and he explained how Hawking and and this effect are basically the same effect, and you know, it's got a lot of nice things, including one of the things he has in there is this coherent state representation that I gave last time. Okay, so let's, so I need to do a bunch of things to do here. The first thing is I have to describe acceleration. So here's an accelerated observer. So the basic feature here is I need to get the coordinate transformation for an accelerated observer. So it's basically going to be, here's the answer is X of tau is one over A cosh A tau. Um, T of tau is one over A cinch A tau. Tau is going to be the proper time of the observer. So this is a guy, and the this is a, of course you could always shift these things by um, by a, a constant, but this is a convenient one. So 
So that clearly x starts out at one over a when t is equal to zero. So here t is equal to zero, x is one over a, but of course you could shift it, but this is makes everything the neatest. Okay. Um, and you know this gives x mu x mu equals minus one over a squared is a relativistic invariant, so this at least is a good set of coordinates. Okay. Um I should say actually what I'm doing is I'm doing actually I'm just doing two D because the angular integrals, the angular variables don't make any difference in the calculation. So all the stuff is just in the longitudinal stuff. So I'm just going to do 2D here, 2D for first Hawking, and then the second Hawking will be 4D. Okay. Okay. So this guy has a, a velocity. So V mu is dx mu d tau. So this is the is dt, d tau, and dx, d tau. This is the this velocity for vectors always one and zero in the rest frame. So it should satisfy v mu v mu equals one in any frame. And here then v mu is clearly just is is um it's uh cosh a tau cinch a tau in the okay in the um in this frame. Okay, so these this is the transformations of the time and and then the acceleration for a vector would be dx mu d tau d squared d tau squared which we, we will take to be zero and a at t is equal to zero and and so if, if we have a mu, a mu should equal minus a squared in all frames. And so a mu by just differentiating these coordinates is a cinch a tau and cosh a tau, which does satisfy the a mu, a mu equals minus, minus a squared, just by cosh sin squared equals one. Okay. Um, so, well, basically what I'm doing is the coordinates of an accelerated observer, then I have to do the whole coordinates. Okay. Okay, and I'm working in 2D. Okay, we're going to use these light cone variables. So if I take T minus X and V is going to be T plus X, these guys are minus one over A, E to the minus A tau, and uh, one over A, E to the plus a tau. So these guys have the usual, ex this have an exponential relation, so basically separate cinch and cosh into to the two expo exponents. If, you, if you're if you following wh why there's a thermal distribution, it really comes in the end from this here. Basically, the, um, you know, tau, is conjugate to the frequency. A in this coordinate is going to 
turned into the conjugate to one over A, you know, when you, before you transfer. And that's going to be the temperature, and you're going to end up with E minus beta times omega in your distributions. Okay? So all the action is really in the coordinates and the fact that it's an exponential transformation to the coordinates makes it thermal in the end. Okay, if you if you had a partial acceleration, you'd get, you know, the, the accelerating slower than than these coordinates, you'd get something different. Wouldn't be thermal, you'd get a trans, uh, particle production, but not thermal. Okay, good. But that's not quite enough. I need to get the whole space time. That's the observer, that's the center of the coordinate system. So I need to do what's called Rindler space time. Rindler space time. It's going to be the, so, so I need the metric of this accelerated system. So let's first look at what I just did. Here's, here's the coordinate system. This is T, T, sorry. X. Um, this is the observer that I just did was at one over X. So here's one over X away, one over A away, one over A from at the start. So T is equal to zero. X was one over A. And then it was this, it gave this hyperbola instead of, oh, let's draw in the, the lines. So it, it asymptotes to um, x equals t in the far future and minus t in the, in the past. Okay, so this is basically x squared minus t squared is one over a squared is the thing that we, we've got there. Um, this guy has a horizon in it if for the accelerated guy, the accelerated observer, for example, guy riding along that, that coordinate system can never see any light rays that come out from that patch there. So all this, for that observer, all of that portion of coordinate space um, is excluded. There's, there's the horizon, the equivalent of a horizon. Okay, so let's, we want to set up a coordinate system. And it's basically going to be centered on the observer. So the, the, the coordinate C0, the time coordinate, is just going to be this proper time. The X coordinate will be, I'll call C, the position in the position in the observer's coordinate system. Okay. Well, it, I mean, it's meant to, to describe the accelerated observer, what the accelerated observer sees. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't see the full moon cuffy, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, well, I drew the picture to make it clear. I mean, it, it, it happens automatically. And so, well, if you have an accelerated coordinate system, you're, you always can, if you have a, con absolute, accelerated course system, you always have this horizon. Um, it's just consequence of the constant acceleration. You're just running away faster than, than, than light can catch up to you. Okay. Um, so the relative velocities between the frames is this, this VMU that I get, had before. VMU was, remember, was Kosh A tau Sinche tau 
And so when we're doing coordinate transformations between two frames, this caches the one over the square root of one minus V squared and cinch is V, this is V relative. V relative over the square root of one minus V squared. Okay. So if I'm, if I'm looking in the, the observer's frame and I see the position out there, so delta C is zero C. So in other words, the position that's, you know, an event that's happening out there at coordinate C is, is like that, gets translated into the Minkowski frame is delta x is this just one over one minus b squared times c. Uh, delta t is the v over square root of one minus v squared c. So this turns into a, a to cosh a tau c um, and cinch a tau c. And then these guys then give me my coordinate transformations overall. So the observer was C is equal to zero. So X of, of tau and C. So a point in that that corresponds to the tau and C in the observer's frame is one plus A C over A. Uh, cosh and yeah, time that corresponds to an event there is one plus a c over a inch. Okay, so that's a relatively simple coordinate transformation. There's just the, the there's these overall factors of one plus a c that in addition to what the the observer just transformed. Um, uh, a, I'm sorry, you're right. I'm sorry. Uh, and I Dartmouth guys are stirring too. This is a tau, a tau, and a tau. I don't know. I see. The reason. Let me put. I was. Let's put those in brackets, okay? Just to make clear, a tau is the, the okay. So then the the metric that we just derived is d. So d s squared is the t squared minus d x squared. Actually. I have down here the inverse transformations, but we, well, we don't need the inverse ones. So let's let's not spend time on that. Um, but you can sort of see uh, it's well, it's one plus a c d tau squared minus d c squared, and that was squared. C is squared. Okay. So just algebra, taking these guys, basically the the observer was um, just the d tau squared piece. And now, because you were, and, and then so you get this one plus a c factor. Okay. Um, our, better for the calculation that we're about to do, and you'll see why in a minute, is to make this a tr coordinate transformation to put this into a conformal form. Okay. Um, conformal form means I'm going to pull out a an overall factor. So d s squared is would be then be some omega s 
squared times d c zero squared minus d c one squared. Okay, and so this basically pulling out the overall factor there. This this has advantages for quantization. So we're going to choose c zero equals tau. So basically, proper time is the time coordinate in this new system. Um, but if I choose, if I write dc as one plus ac times some new coordinate dc one, then then if I do this, then I get the ds squared is one plus a c squared d c zero squared minus d c one squared. Uh, there's a conformal form. So I just I just need to solve that guy to put this in conformal form. And that's easy. D c one is d c over one plus a c, which I can integrate is c one is one over a log one plus a c. Um, and it's, I don't need any constant in the integration because c is equal to zero is the same as c one is equal to zero. So that those are, un, are related the same. And then I write um, one plus a c squared this factor one plus AC is clearly just exponen exponentiating C e to the C1, e to the 2A C1, D C0 minus D C1. And, um, Okay, so that's 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 the new metric. That's the one we'll use. Uh, and then in these guys, we're going to do light cone coordinates. Cone. <laughs> light cone coordinates. Um, you twiddle is C0 minus C1. V twiddle is C0 minus plus C1. DS squared is then E to the A V twiddle minus U twiddle D u twiddle d v twiddle so it's again a conformal factor and then you can just identify u is minus one over a either minus a u twiddle and v is one over a e to the a v twiddle just by changing this is supposed this is du dv in the okay I'm going to need at some step later on I'm going to need the limits so let me just do the limits while I'm here um, is u twiddle so the coordinate describing the accelerated observer goes to minus infinity minus infinity um, then u also goes to minus infinity i actually only need the u coordinate so that's all i'll do um, so u goes to minus infinity as u twiddle does but as u twiddle goes to plus infinity u goes to zero. 
Okay. This is the, the this is the horizon in, in these coordinates. X x equals to t um, is the boundary line. So you go from the, the horizon in U, Minkowski coordinates to minus infinity. You only see half. Um, so, the, what do I want to do next? So let's, let's recall a couple things, general things. Here we go. So last time I, I said that box phi turns into du dv on phi. And so phi can be solved with right and left moving fields, a of u plus b of v. There's the general solution there. Um, u, remember, u is T minus X. So E to the I omega U is right movers. And V, V is T plus X. E to the I omega V means left movers. So we can quantize left and right separately. quantize u, v separately. So one of the things we will do is we, so when we normally do quantization, we normally write real dk, so that's the momentum, um, a of k. We'll now write this using um, well, we can make this d omega, where omega is going to go, so k went from minus infinity to plus infinity. If we separate out this, it's d omega is zero to infinity, I'll have a, I'll, I'll drop the indices soon, but a right e to the i omega um, I want t minus x there plus a left uh, e to the i omega t plus x and then plus the a dagger pieces uh, plus the Hermitian conjugate pieces. Okay. Um, so we're going to end up doing this integral d omega instead of dk and we're going to separate out the the u guys and the v guys. And so this will be in the formula. I'll write it as integral d t zero to infinity omega a of a of omega e to the i omega u plus u goes to v. Okay. So we're just. I'm just going to completely separate left and right from what we're doing. Okay, so there's that's step number one. Step number two in quantization is that it is to know the fact that two d scalar fields are conformally invariant. Okay, so let's just do that. So here we, here we have some coordinates. ds squared is this omega squared coordinates. dc 
zero squared minus d c one squared. Um, so this is omega squared eta mu nu d c mu d c nu. Okay, so that's the conformal each of them. So in 2D then, square root of minus G is just omega squared. G mu nu upper is omega minus two, eta mu nu. So if I write integral D, the action is the integral D two X square root of minus G g mu nu, d mu phi, d nu phi. Um, so this is the action of a massless scalar field. And I actually should have written massless up here. Massless scalar field. OK. Um, well, you can see that the omega factors disappear. This is one half d two x times omega squared times omega to the minus two eta mu nu d mu phi d nu phi. These guys cancel And your leftover in any conformal frame with just a flat. But this is then lovely. Now we know how to we we can do the quantization in the accelerating frame. We can do the quantization in Minkowski, of course. Um, so let's let's quantize. So Minkowski, actually, I don't have any questions about that, that what I've done so far. I was just sorry. is it clear? Clear enough? Okay. So Minkowski will just do usual quantization. Um, here it's zero to infinity d omega over two pi. One over the square root of two omega a of omega e to the minus i omega u plus a dagger of omega e to the plus i omega u and then plus u goes to v. Okay, so I'm, this is the right moving part, the left moving part is the same. Okay, the this is this is a neutral scale, so it's it's, it's its own antiparticle. Um, no, no, you you really don't. You you still you. You just have waves moving to the right, waves moving to the left. That's that's really all I've done. I've separated them out. Okay. Um, to define the vacuum state, remember all the actions in the vacuum state. We do creation operators: a of omega, the dagger of omega is two pi. Delta of omega minus uh, one primed minus omega primed, and the vacuum state is defined by a of omega is equal zero. So that's that's our vacuum. Okay. But the the good feature of the the conformal frame now is I can do exactly the same thing in accelerated frames. 
the accelerated frame, we have, um, well, phi is going to be the integral zero to infinity of d omega, but let's just keep the notation separate. This is, let's make it d capital omega over two pi. So I'll have to say cap omega all the time, but one over the square root of two cap omega. And there's some different creation operators here. Um, will be b of cap omega e to the minus i omega u twiddle. That's the light cone coordinate there. Plus b dagger of cap omega e to the plus i om cap omega, uh, cap omega, cap omega. Yeah. So is that what you're catching me on? Yeah, okay, okay. Cap omega twiddle plus u twiddle goes to v twiddle. So that you see how it moves. And we just define you know, b's and b daggers the same. And the vacuum vacuum here is defined by B half omega. Okay, so let's label this guy Minkowski and this guy A accelerating. Actually, let's make this Rindler. That sounds, sounds better, right? It's not Rindler. But it's clear from the construction um that that the vacuum Rindler is not equal to the vacuum Minkowski. And so Rindler guys is is gonna see particles because it's not not the vacuum anymore. Okay. So let's calculate this Bogular Wolf transformation. Okay, that was all the setup. Here's, here's the thing calculation. Okay, um, the form of the transformation is the slightly more general form that I gave you. I'm going to say that B of omega is going to be written in terms of um, A's of omega by this integral relation. Zero to infinity um, alpha of omega, cap omega, a of omega and my notes probably copied out of some other place. I have minus beta of omega here so that I have a minus sign for my normal thing. I'm just gonna carry it. And so this is like the inverse transformation, A dagger of omega. Okay. Um, so this is the one last time. And last time I showed that, that for the commutation rules to both be consistent, we need the condition that that integral infinity d omega alpha of omega capital omega alpha star omega capital omega prime minus the betas of the same thing. had better equal a delta function of okay, so that came from the commutation rules being valid. Both of those have commutation rules being valid. Okay. And that's conventional. The 
the easy way to do this is just to plug in that transformation and into we have two expressions for phi. So let me take the second expression, take the B, write it as Bogdanov transformation, and look at the uh, equate it to the first. Okay, so we re relate these. So we so phi. So here's integral d d omega over two pi. Actually, one thing I meant to say here is this is only slightly different from what I did last time. Last time I had the relation be minus infinity to two to infinity. The but it's just it's equivalent to having this thing vanish when the argument is negative. Okay. So there's nothing different here. So I got one over square root of two omega b of omega e to the minus i omega u tw u twiddle plus the Hermitian conjugate. So that's there. Now I plug in, so this is now D capital omega two pi. I plug in for B, I put this integral D omega. Um, I have alpha. A and beta a dagger e to the minus i omega u twiddle and I plug in for the reverse guy um, There, um, reverse guy is where is it go? Come here, come. Okay, so it's is B dagger. So I have to have um, I have uh, alpha star uh, A dagger uh, minus beta. Star A and I have e to the plus pi omega u twiddle. And then I can close the bracket. So I've just plugged those in. And then this has got to equal the integral d omega one over square root of two omega. Well, let's just write the a piece, a of omega e to the minus i omega u plus the Hermitian conjugate. I won't work with that. Okay. So at this stage, it's, it's just comparing these formulas. Let's, if you look at the a pieces, there's an a piece there and an a piece in over here so that I get um, the coefficient of the a piece one over two omega square rooted e to the minus i omega u equals has to equal the integral big omega one over the square root of 
two big omega, but then there's the alpha piece, e to the minus i big omega g twiddle, and the beta piece minus this minus beta star. A, no, 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 no A here. E to the plus pi omega e to the pi. Then just carry it out a little further. Um, but all we've done is we've just related the two bases, picked out the coefficient of A that's required by the Bose here. Okay. It's not too hard to pick out um, the alpha and beta coefficients individually, because this side here has this Fourier dependency to the plus or minus i omega u. So I can just um, I can just uh, Pull that out. So let's if if we take I take integral d u twiddle e to the let's make it plus i omega prime u twiddle and I'm going to write both sides of the equations here. Um, on this side, it's one over the square root of two omega e to the minus i omega u. Okay. That's that's a little bit of a funny calculation because u and u twiddle are related, and that's what you have to calculate eventually. But on the other side, it's pretty simple. I have um, integral uh, zero to infinity d omega. 1 over the square root 2 capital omega, alpha of omega, omega, integral du twiddle e to the minus i omega minus omega prime du twiddle. That's a delta function, of course. Um, and so this is. 2 pi times 1 over the square root of 2 omega prime alpha of omega omega prime. Okay, so I've, I've got the alpha coefficient right there. Let me just write them out. And we've got our, our Bogliero coefficient. Alpha of omega, capital omega, is one over two pi, square root of big omega over little omega, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, du twiddle, e to the minus i omega u, e to the plus i omega u twiddle. Okay. That's actually a more complicated function than you might think, but it's a pretty simple looking thing right here. And if I did the same thing for beta, picking out beta, I just multiply by the opposite sign here, the opposite sign. That actually gives me beta star. So let me write beta, the beta of omega, omega is one over the square root of two pi omega over omega integral minus infinity to infinity d u twiddle e to the plus i omega u e to the plus I omega u twiddle. Okay. Um, 
this comes, okay, you basically remember, this is, this is beta star star. Okay. If I, if I multiply this with the other sign here or normal your primary, I get beta star. I then complex conjugate, so it's the same sign on the omegas and opposite sign on, on those guys. Okay. So this is, let's just pull out this omega over omega factor, some function of omega and omega. Omega, and this is with this these factors out in the front. It's the fun same exact same function with minus omega and omega. Okay. So now it's a math problem. It's not a, it's not as bad a math problem as you might think. Um. What I'd like to show is that this f of omega and omega is e to the i omega over a log omega a over a, sorry, yeah. omega over a times some function that depends only on capital omega. Okay, that's going to be enough. Okay. Um, to get to get our answer out. This this other function is known, I'll give give you the answer, but I'm not going to calculate it. Um all right, so I think I think time wise this is fine. So here's the pathway. Um, the, the trouble here is I've got two different coordinates, u and u twiddle. I want to have only one of them. So let's convert everything to u. So I'm going to have u is minus 1 over a e to the minus a u twiddle. There's my exponent. Um, du is then e to the minus um, a u twiddle du twiddle equals minus a u d u twiddle so that the du twiddle that I had there can be written as my e to the minus one over a a u d u. Okay, so that's cleaned up the u twiddle into u's, and then the exponent e to the minus i omega u twiddle, which is the other factor, is then just minus a u to the minus i omega over a. Okay. So this gets me gets it written as this function omega omega is integral du. Now there's a one over two pi from the definition. Um, minus a u minus i omega over a minus one e to the i omega u du. Okay. Um. The, the easiest way to get this, the omega dependence here, is just to make this guy a new variable. Then there's going to be a homogeneous omega dependence that's going to factor out. So I'm, let's let z equals 
I'll make a U. Um, DZ, then, okay, so then, then we have F of omega. Omega is, I have the integral DZ. Actually, I should at this stage just say that from the limits of integration that I did before, that was minus infinity up to zero. It's not really needed for my calculation, but when I show you something later on, you'll like that. Okay, dz over omega is that guy. Um, this is minus a z minus i omega over a minus one over omega to the minus i omega a minus one and e to the i z. So you can pull out the omega dependence. This is omega to the plus i omega over a times one over one over two pi integral minus infinity into infinity uh, minus i a z d z minus. zero. Okay, and this is my, this is then the factor that I wanted, e to the i omega over a log w. Um, and this is my f of, f of omega. Um, so that's, I mean, we actually know what f of omega is, f of omega of omega is, um, it turns out to be e to the pi omega over 2a, and I've not calculated this, but a gamma function of minus i omega over a, which makes sense if you remember what the gamma function is, the gamma function of some variable x is integral zero to infinity t to the x minus one e to the minus t dt. Okay, and that that's sure. No, this is all too far. Okay. Um, this is uh, it looks like that just with some complex variables. Change the around. I I haven't worked through the, the, you know, you rotate the contour one way or the other. I, I didn't work through it, but we, we, this is the piece I want. Okay, but now we're almost done. We're, we're, we'll, we'll be there in just a second. This is the, the piece that we want. And if you go back up here, the, the alpha coefficient is f with plus omega. The Beta coefficient is f with minus omega, so I just have to put in the the log minus omega. So pretty easily at this stage, then we have if you if you remember your the um, the log I have. Um, the log log of minus omega is equal to log of omega uh, plus i pi. I think I want the x plus 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 i pi. Then this easily gives f of minus omega equals. Well, here's the e to the, I want to put an i pi up there, e to the minus 
pi omega over a f of plus omega okay, which means that beta squared equals e to the minus 2 pi omega over a alpha squared. There's your Boltzmann factor. So here we go. We Last time we showed you that the distribution from this Bogdanov transformation was the integral d omega beta squared over the normalization, which was alpha squared minus beta squared. Um, but beta squared is this exponent times alpha squared. So there's alpha squared upstairs and downstairs. This is e to the minus 2 pi omega over a over 1 minus e to the minus 2 pi omega over a equals 1 over e to the 2 pi omega capital omega over a minus 1, which is e to the beta omega minus 1, with the unroot temperature being a over 2 pi. OK, so there's, there's the whole calculation. Um, if you followed it through, you go back and follow what it is. It was all in that exponential relation between these guys, which when I changed variables here, gave me that overall factor out front there, which gave me the exponent. Okay. Yes, so there it is. Um, so, my, my plan then is going to be, I'm going to do black holes, I'm going to do it by, um, by basically matching onto this, basically doing a 2D black hole and matching onto exactly this calculation so that the calculation is completely done by closed coefficient. Then I have a field theory way of doing it. Um, I don't have to do all this algebra anymore because we've done all the algebra that we need you will again see the coordinate change. Okay. Okay. What do you want? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I've, I've just I've just done this because it's you can separate the two variables of very essentially. Right. Right. Yes. That's right. Yeah, the temperature is the same in both directions. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, it looks like a local curvature. It just is. Yeah, and that's, well, you'll see in the black hole case, it's the same, same sort of coordinate change. Light point coordinates from infinity to the horizon are the same. So if your vacuum at your horizon is Minkowski like, then it looks like it's uh, radiating when you look at it from the point. Okay, good. Okay. So I'm actually going to stop and do the um, course evaluation.